Hey, people, it's R Swamp here, and welcome to episode 3 of Ace Attorney Investigations. Last time we continued our investigation, we met Jock Sportsman, the murderer of this case, and we are cross examining him. Because he thinks Gumshoe's the murderer because he saw some bloody writing on the on the case files. Sorry, sorry, Sportsman, but this is not Dangarampa. That never flies in Ace Attorney game. It makes it the work of a criminal intent on tampering with the scene of the crime. That's so low! I can't believe the criminal tried to pin this whole thing on me, Sorry, I'm gonna get up, sir! You'll see! I'm gonna have them under us in no time! Well, Mr. Boltzmann? Ha <laughs> Brilliant! Absolutely brilliant! Logic deserving of Olympic gold! I appreciate the praise, but it doesn't change the fact that your reasoning is flawed. Meh, you win some, you lose some. That's how life goes! Glad I was so cheery, even though I feel more dead than alive! Ah, but you know, this is really a shame. I really didn't want to have to bring this up, however. Wh what is it this time? Are you still after me, pal? You mind me for a second. Who has the key to this office? That would be me! But Mr. Edgeway just proved that I'm innocent, pal! And now he's wearing the coat. He's in the Praise the Lord! Yes. <laughs> That's absolutely right, and I acknowledge your innocence for... Jesus! <laughs> then why do I sense that you have still have something to say? Just go flap. He's gonna fly. Well, I was thinking, did you know there's one other person here with a key to this office? One other person? Hey, you there? Y yes, sir. What is it, sir? Would you kindly fetch and squirt that lovely young lady here for me? A lady? That girl's a member of the civilian security. Think of her as a material witness. Security? Did you say security? No, stop it, Bell, don't! What's wrong with him all of a sudden? Yup, it's Maggie. I believe she needs no introduction. I have called upon Miss Maggie Bird, a member of security. D Detective Gumshoe, sir. Maggie! Miss Bird is the security guard on watch tonight. I see, and your point is? My point is, she could have very well used it. And by it, I mean the master key which can open all the office doors in this building. What? Wh what? If you're not the guilty party, Detective Gumshoe, then the only other person with access to this room is Miss Bird. How dare you? Uh, what the hell was that voice squeak just now? Uh, that was horrible. I'm sorry. How dare you? I would never sneak into someone's room. I am sorry if my voices are off. I am, I'm having a mucus drip. That's right. I refuse to believe that Maggie's the culprit, pal. Um, it was me. That's right. I did it. Can we take that as a confession, Gumshoe? Um, well, it wasn't really me, but I did it. definitely was a Maggie, pal. So, yeah, it was me. It, if it was, you'd have no problem with it, right? Please refrain from flying off the handle, Detective. There's no need for such theatrics. Listen to your boss, Detective. He understands what I'm saying here. That girl is the only one who could have committed this crime. And for the s one simple reason. Reason for suspicion. It's pretty obvious Miss Burr's stuck in your room using the master key. I mean, Detective Gumshoe is the one who opened the door. Then that leaves only Miss Bird as a prime suspect. On top of that, she knows our good detective, doesn't she? Make it all more probable that she was the one who faked the dying message and lied to Jesus! <laughs> Every time he says that, I'm going to be doing like a Jesus. I don't know why. <laughs> so you're saying she used the master key? Incredibly incriminating evidence, wouldn't you say? Incriminated, but gee, you can't escape Jesus. <laughs> With like three E's. That's what you claimed about the evidence earlier as well. That was then, this is now. The flow of a good match always changes during a rally. It's all about your reflexes and reaction time, especially for an athlete like me and who lacks Jesus. <laughs> I don't know why I'm doing that. It's gotta be a thing. Like with the voice crack included. I am sorry. 
I want. I wonder if anyone else other than Miss Bad who could have easily could have used the master key. It seems that the only way to get Mr. Paul Smith give me more details is to press him. I swear, it's always the first day of recording that gets me like this. The second day, I'm pretty much fine. Like my voice recovers perfectly. It's all beautiful. Yeah. <sighs> Okay. Are you sure Miss Bird is the only member of, of security who could have used the master key? There's only one person on staff at this time of night, and tonight she's it. Isn't that right, Miss Bird? Confess your crimes to Jesus! That's um true, but. Okay, I'm back. But I wasn't able to use the master key at the time of the crime, sir! Wasn't able to? What's that supposed to mean? Yes, yes, move on. I'd hate to get sidetracked by something unrelated. What do you mean unrelated? I want to hear what she has to say, pal! But you can't really trust her not to tell lies, plus I hate wasting time! Just like how I hate, just like Jesus does! Mm. Should I hear Miss Brad out? Ask more details. Not so fast, I do am interested in what, he, what he, Miss Brad has to say. Did I just say it'd be a waste of time? It waste of my time, a waste of Jesus' time! We need to hear our lies? Jesus doesn't need to hear our lies! <laughs> oh my gosh! You're going to hear this. It's going to be the joke. I'll be the judge of that. Miss Bad, if you please. I discovered that the master key was missing at around 1 a.m., sir. What do you mean by missing? As it was a, as in, it was anywhere in the security booth, sir. The killer must have stolen it. I think that Maggie actually looks kind of cute in that picture. Mr. Boltzmann, I believe this is an important piece of testimony, don't you? <sighs> I can't believe someone like you would take, be taken in by such words. Mr. Edgeworth, you need to check out your faith. You need to you need to get checked. I'm not lying, sir! If that's the case, then I'd like to know why you have the mask key now. I, I don't quite know. It just reappeared all of a sudden, sir. Huh, a likely story. And where's your proof that the key was stolen to begin with? I bet you just forgot where you put it and then found it again. I never lose things! I can practically guarantee that! But you lose at life, Maggie. You lose at life all the time. With me, if something disappears, it's usually because someone stole it! Yeah, pal, trust me! You don't want to test just how bad her luck is! Unfortunately, I can't determine this piece of testimony is conclusive. Glad you agree, Mr. Edgeworth. Uh, but... You still haven't established Maggie's boy for breaking into Miss Edgeworth's office! Her motive? Didn't we already establish it was theft? I mean, the culprit clearly went through the bookshelves and at least tried the safe. It is as Mr. Portsman says, Detective. I can't ignore the facts that all the others point towards a motive of theft. But I'm done taking blows. It's time to contact with a few facts of my own. I concur that the culprit's motives appear to have been thievery. However, glad to hear that Great Miles Edgeworth is in agreement with little old me. However, with regards to the investigation of the bookshelves in the safe... Hey, good thinking asking for my opinion on this matter. Would it be too much for you to allow me to complete a full sentence? Hold it. I thought we established that Detective Garbage's innocence... We established Detective Garbage's innocence pretty thoroughly. It was just a theory, one hypothesis among the many possibilities. I mean, I dad my dad's on Miss Bird from the very beginning. If that's the case, then why didn't you mention her first? No, no, don't make that face, see? There goes the truth, running the other way. Let's pick up the pace and see what we if we can't catch up to it. I don't think you're catching my drift. Ah, but we're in agreement that the detective is the killer, right? If so, then I hope you understand what I say. That since she's the only one who could have opened the office door? Don't you think it's a bit early to be jumping to conclusions? Are you saying there's another way to open the door other than with the master key? Oh, I get Perhaps you had a spare made for someone else. I'll have you know I have never made a spare, so what are you insinuating? Nothing. I guess I should have known better than suggest that someone like you would. You have no friends. You don't roll with Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> really? I could just imagine that's basically Matt Newman. He's like... That jocks, he's like one of those guys who helps at youth centers. 
Is there someone in this district who hasn't at least heard of Detective Gumshoe? Good point, he's practically a celebrity among his prosecutors. The, the guy you can cut the page to no matter how many times. Really? I never knew I was so tank talked about, sorry! We're holding a co our collective breath, you know? When you're gonna break the have a mental breakdown, you're gonna start cheating at the prosecutor's office. But when you screw up so badly that you're literally chased out off the force. Well, what, what? Is that true, Mr. Android? I will not, I, I will not answer that. Uh, of course not! That, that's hogwash! Don't scare me like that! I almost had a heart attack there! I could really go for a milkshake right now. I know this Dutch rain, but I'm really just craving a milkshake right now. Like a good, thick milkshake. By dying message, you mean the bloody letters that spell out gumshoe. I figured that whoever wrote his name must have wanted to frame him. And just the act of choosing his name is proof enough that the two knew each other well. <gasps> Mr. Android, what are you waiting for? Hurry up and present some evidence! I would love to. But first, we should listen a little more and digest what he's saying. And press him for more information. Okay. Okay, yep. Yeah. I must object your line of logic. And which part do you have an objection to? It's... Yes, well... Thank you, Miss Android! You're no good with your own flossing! The detective's wrath for a change! How did it come to this?! <laughs> Calm down, Miles. Listen carefully and then... Th and think everything through a little more rationally. Alright, oh, right! It's my dumb logic, my... my crazed... Don't mind. Objection. What? Oh yeah. Yeah. One thing that's actually unique about the A Story Investigation series, they actually have multiple fails scenarios for each cross examination portion. You're gonna see some good ones in the second game. I will point them out. Mr. Morpin, there's a huge flaw in your logic. Really? I think it holds up rather well, actually, because it has Jesus backing it up. What do you think is wrong with it? Oh, nothing! Let's move on! I thought so. You don't defy Jesus. <laughs> this isn't like you at all, sir. Concentrate! That was careless of me. I can't afford to do that, or the truth will slowly slip away. Remain calm, Miles. It's the only way. Oh, darn it. As our prime suspect, please, key! Ah! I'm gonna lose this! Objection. I know it's a key! It would behoove you to take a good look at this. I see, but I failed to see how it has anything to do with me. Is that so? You're not the top of your game today, are you, Mr. Genius Prosecutor? And allow him to set the pace here. I must remain calm. Only by doing so can I find the fatal flaw in his reasoning. I have the fatal flaw. The key was stolen. <laughs> what am I failing at? I know the series. I know you did it, Portsmouth. I know how you did it. I know how you stuck into the office. Okay, I'm trying to think of what it is. Hold it. Okay, what am I missing? I 
I did press! Hold it. Are you sure, Miss Bowser? The only member of security who ever used the mask. There's only one person on the staff at this time of night, and tonight she's it. Isn't that right, Miss Bird? And me to Jesus! That's um true, but but I wasn't able to use the mask key at the time. Did I read the story? Yes, I know, I know, come on. Objection. I like this one, where's your proof that the key was stolen to begin with? I bet you just forgot where you put it and then found it again. I know you don't have a reason to be in this entrance office! Me and Mo didn't be ourselves who was theft? Oh god, this is gonna be the pumbling episode of I'm trying to figure this crap out! Come on! Oh god, I'm I don't even know. Oh, come on. Gotta figure this out. What what is it? Did I press everything? I know I did something! Ugh! First case, I know this is gonna be miserable. Hold it. Oh, come on, I'm feeling heated all of a sudden! Ugh, I feel like I'm fixing. Ugh. Ugh. I'm feeling this heat. Sorry if I'm sound like I'm I'm having I'm making noise. I'm really hot all of a sudden. I'm feeling really heated. And I don't think it's heartburn. Ugh. Come on, I'm feeling out of it. Okay. Okay, come on. What what am I missing? I know that basically that we have something. I have the key. I think we have to use the key. Okay, what what is it though? What is it? What is it? What is it? What is it? Forget, forget, think. What is it? What am I missing? What am I missing? Okay. Yes, yes. What what am I missing? What what is it? What is it? What am I missing? Okay. Really, the the revolver, we have the same I know the master key has something to do with it. But what is it? What is it? What am I missing? I swear, this is what happens when I don't play a game for this extended period of time. Just, I, the thing with me is that I know the general overall plots pretty well. I know, like, how a case happens overall. But the thing is, is that just trying to figure things out, is that basically the in-betweens, it's like I said, my weakness with A30 games. Trying to figure out the sequence of events of how things are going. Ugh, swear, trying to figure this out. What is it? What is it? Okay, gotta figure it out. Ugh. I don't think it's the crime scene notes. Uh, 
Okay. Come on, what is it? What am I missing? Ugh, I swear this is horrible. First case, Zod Thwomp, guy who actually knows the investigation series. Just what am I doing wrong? Come on. What am I missing? Really, really, what? Is secret safe? Okay, God, thank God. Thank God. Okay. 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 What is it? What is it? Is it? I don't know. Oh! How would Maggie know about this? Oh. What is wrong with me? I swear! Oh, I'm gonna have real a lot of fun when I get to the evasive attorney investigations playthrough because apparently I'm the best when it comes to making these sort of errors. How does Maggie know about the freaking safe? Oh yes, the brilliance of Zarthwam. I know the series pretty much inside out. Yeah, I'm like, how do I do this? How do I do this? Mr. Edgeworth, how do I do this? Do you wish to continue insisting that Maggie that Miss Brad was out stealing something? Why not? It's true after all. In which case, I am dearly sorry. I'm gonna make this a longer video as a result. It was also by your life that we came to the whole theory conclusion anyways. That may be, but you must also be aware of the fact that this safe is a secret safe. The existence of which is only pri pri privy to prosecutors. Ah! I find it a little hard to believe that a hidden safe was part of our cutting plan. But, but, but she could have found it by accident while she was turning everything upside down. I highly doubt that. I'd say the culprit knew exactly what they were looking for. After all, only the bookshelf and the safe were targeted. Yeah. Yeah, everything I didn't know of. Even I didn't know of the safe, pal. I, granted, I didn't know about logic, but still. And that means there's no way Maggie couldn't know that neither. Then, then you're proposing that the killer is a prosecutor. Interesting conclusion. That's definitely looking more and more probable. What's wrong, Prosecutor? Do you have a different suspect in mind now? Uh, uh, cause it's why, what made you? What, what's with the angry face all of a sudden? It's, it's all my fault. Why do you mean? It's Jim. He knew about the existence of the secret safes. What did you say? We were partners like inseparable conjoined twins. That's why I told him I filled him in on the secret safe. Then that means... Yeah, I know. I had only just told him to. Obviously, it was wrong of me to tell him. I still can't b quite believe it, but the thief who broke into your room was probably Jim. Now he's claiming that the victim was the thief? And you were simply trying to stop him, weren't you? Miss Maggie Bird. Excuse me? I mean, you are a security guard, right? That's your job. But killing is going too far, even in your risky profession. What the? You're still accusing Maggie of murder? Yes and no. I mean, she had stumbled upon Jim, who had probably drawn his gun. I get it. It was the self-defense, wasn't it? No, I, I could never. I could never do something like that. I not even as a security guard, sir. Uh, plus, even if he was the thief, he wouldn't have had a key to the office. Which is precisely why he had to steal it, wouldn't you say? It was Jim who stole the master key. Ah! Uh. Pretty impossible for a supposedly stolen key to be here with us, unless... Well, unless you retrieved it from Jim after you killed him. Mr. Portsman, are you honestly accusing your own partner of being a thief? I don't want to admit it, but it's the only way for everything to make sense. He has no honor! Now that I think we're done here, the investigation waits for no man. Would you feel be so kind to see yourselves out? You can't get us out of Mr. Edgeworth's office! Ah, but I'm the one who's being assigned to this case. You're all suspects to varying degrees and therefore ineligible to run this show. Listen, pal, how many times do I have to say this? Maggie can't be the culprit! Detective, don't you calm yourself? But Zoe! 
We have no choice but to accommodate his request for now. <sighs> Thank you, Miss Edgeworth. At least one of us understands. God bless you, Miss Edgeworth. Now that you can remove yourselves from my crimes, I'd be most grateful. Mm. Mark my words, Mr. Portman, we will meet again. If that's a formal request from the legendary prosecutor himself, then I guess so. Now, don't disappoint me, you hear? Don't disappoint me, no Jesus! I am running with this joke! You are going to be seeing me run with this joke with Portsman. No, I'm not saving on Edgeworth's maroon background. March 14th, 4.18 a.m., prosecutor's building, 12th floor hallway. What is it with that prosecutor? I can't believe how rude he was! It was unbelievable! Please maintain your professionalism, detective. I'm gonna find some real solid evidence proving Maggie's into You'll see, sorry! But we've been kicked out of the crime scene, sir! The crew! So then, what now? Looks like my looks like my life's falling to yet another gigantic ditch. Do not spam is bad! We can't over we can overcome this as well. There's, there are many other places and things we should be looking into anyways. Uh, really, sorry? For example, this hallway! The linchpin of this argument against Miss Barge relates to the master key. In that case, this hallway is the perfect place to look for more information regarding the mystery surrounding my door. Prosecutor's building, 12th floor hallway. Now, one thing that's I always loved about this thing. You go over here, Winston Payne is in the office at 2 o'clock in the morning. It's one thing with Edgeworth, the insomniac workaholic, but Winston? It looks like you're in quite the pitch, Mr. Edgeworth! To be sure, murder within the walls of the prosecutor's office is no trifling matter. We must find, apprehend, and punish the killer accordingly. Perseus! Sounds like a messy case you got in your hands! Yes, and I love how Winston, his name is just Prosecutor. He's even lower on the tone pole and Edgeworth's eyes. If you ever feel lost or need some advice, my door is always open! How gracious, I will keep you off on mine. Who is this guy again? The janitor? Winston doesn't even get a text box, he gets nothing. And I just love how so much smaller Winston is compared to Edgeworth. Like, Edgeworth could easily beat up Winston. Like, Edgeworth could easily beat the crap at Winston. Is everything, is everything alright? Yes, sir. If you must know, I weighed myself this morning and I am finally at 154 pounds. Congratulations, but I was asking about this hallway in this room. Oh, everything is okay, sir. A word of advice, stay focused or you may start to lose your more weight. In that case, Gumshoe would be a stick. He'd be a literal twig. What is that basketball hoop doing here? What is Fan doing in my prosecutor's office? Hey, didn't that used to be just outside the building a long time ago? So when and why was it moved indoors? I don't remember exactly, but I saw one of the officers drag up here recently. Drag it? I heard that... I heard they went into the office, so the poor guy had to bring up himself. All the way up to the 12th floor. What is a basketball doing here? That's just the boys with the possession, sorry. I also heard he plays soccer, dodgeball, and even tennis. And not a single one of those sports is suitable to be and not a single one of those sports is suitable to be playing in the hallway. Yeah, we only have two offices we can investigate. We can investigate side office. I won't rest until I've inspected every suspicious looking nook and cranny. Yeah, I'll go in extra five minutes just so that way basically I can compensate for what was going on earlier this episode. I am ashamed of myself. I swear, what is wrong with me? It's... Ah! Isn't that, is that missing oaf to his file, soy? No doubt about it. The bloody letters make it market as clear as day. There seems to have been a few pages missing. Our thief took only what was necessary and left the rest behind. So what are the rest of so these old files about, Soy? I guess they've got some... They've got something worth stealing in them, huh? Not particularly. It's just a collection of court case files. However, the cases within these files are not mine. Huh? They belong to the high prosecutor that used to occupy my current office. I have my reasons, but let's just say I was charged with keeping them as they were. Then that means the thief must have lied the files for a specific reason, right? It would seem so. Only the pages related to the case from ten years ago are missing. I wonder why anyone would care so much about an old case. A well-crafted, high-quality sofa for visitors. The stitching is excellent. Talk about luxury wing, Harriet. These babies are also great for napping, you know. 
You would sleep. You would sleep out even out here, Detective? In a hallway? Whatever I do, I always wind up dreaming about giving testimony up on the stand. Well, he ends up the same way, me getting tried by a lawyer. Isn't that awful? Maybe I should give it a try sometime to envision myself winning, naturally. Talking to... Okay. Portsmouth office. This office. Um, tw um, 1203, 1203. Hey, Maggie, whose room is this again? It's Mr. Portsman, sir. So he's my new neighbor. I see. I suppose he moved in while I was away... While I was away overseas. Oh, great. The property values are going to go way down. This floor is cursed. I was wondering if I may speak with you about a bit concerning this case. I've always been a big fan of the courtroom, but this... This is like a dream! A dream where I'm being cross-examined by THE Miles Edgeworth! Once again, Edgeworth doesn't cross-examine! He gets testimony! Phoenix is the one who cross-examines! I can't let this chance pass by! I must remember to ask her about the Master Key. I should draw her memory by showing her notes on her through the present button. Okay. Badge. That's a prosecutor's badge, isn't it? It proves that you're really a prosecutor! Interesting. Despite all appearances, she seems to know more than Gumshoe. With that badge, even I could become a professional prosecutor! Sir, may I please try on just for a little bit? I don't think that would be a very good idea, do you? Uh, I guess not. On second thought, they were actually on the same level. Gun! Ranger's a little security guard, so... I'm not sure what I should do with this other than to guard it! It's like talking to another Gumshoe! They're multiplying! Only this one I can't cut a pay! Actually, wait, wait, what am I saying? Of course I can cut a pay! So when did you discover that the mask key was missing? By the time I realized it, I think it was around 1 a.m., sir. And I noticed it was back at around 2.30. It was just sitting there on the ledge where the security room's reception window is. I'm sure that between those two times, it was not just gone, but stolen, sir! Why is such an important key stored in such an insecure place? Ah, it's not like that, sir. We always keep the key further inside the room, away from the window. Uh, always you say, except for this time, correct? Well, I admit that it was a bit careless, but I had my reasons. Not that because I was so using it at the time. It was after I used it, I left the thing on the ledge. She used the master key. Have you ever met the victim before? Well, I've seen him a couple of times before when I had to go to Mr. Portsman's office. Mr. Bates was always playing basketball with Mr. Portsman, sir. That sounds like fun! Just once I'd love to play with him! It sounds fun, but the only person ever taking a shot was Mr. Portsman. All Mr. Bates ever did was passing the ball, sir. On second thought, I don't think I'd have hit him well with them. Actually, you would, Gumshoe. That's your life with Edgeworth. What did you mean by you used the master key? Oh, I used it to open the door for this person who had forgotten his key. No! You don't do the Meekins, Maggie! You don't do the Meekins! I mean, it's my job as a security guard, right? Ah! What is it? That's why I remembered the person who forgot his key. It was Mr. Portsman! What? Please tell me more, Miss Pratt, quickly! It was around 12 a.m. Mr. Portsman had forgotten his office key, so he came down to security, sir. And that's when you loaned the master key to him. No way! It's against the regulations to loan the master key out to anyone. I walked with Mr. Portsman to his office and opened the door for him personally, sir. Oh, by the way, Portsman. He is only slightly older than Edgeworth. I see. And, and then what happened then? Well, he called me up to his office to come close up as he closed his office as he was leaving to go home. That's around 1.30, I think. So in summary, for the sake of one forgetful prosecutor, you used the master key twice tonight. The second time it was stolen, though. Talk about suspicious! I doubt you can say that you've never left your keys at home, Detective. I think this calls for a thorough examination of Mr. Portsman's door. Miss Maggie Burr, correct? I take it that you are an acquaintance of the detective. She was under my supervision back when she was still on the voice, sorry! 
One day she got caught by her mother and things aren't going downhill, so she quit. But I owe a lot to the detective gum for introducing me to my current employer. Or so I thought until a few hours ago. Right before I was about to clock out for the night. You got caught up in this whirlwind of a case, correct? Don't worry, my whole life has been nothing but a whirlwind of bad luck and failures. Since I was six months old, I fell from the ninth floor of my apartment building. I've been hit by all sorts of vehicles, gotten sick from all sorts of foods. Fell down almost every test I've taken and experienced almost every kind of disaster. And even now, I'm, I even managed to be named a criminal just so I become a security guard. That's a lot to go through in one lifetime. I know, and just why I thought I'd finally found my happiness, I wind up getting you and Detective Gumshoe involved in my bad luck. Uh, sorry, my voice is just so off. You don't need to worry about me, Miss Bird, nor do you need to worry about yourself. I will solve this case and prove your innocence. All I ask in return is your cooperation. Yes, sir, Miss Redford, you can count on me. I'll do all I can to help. Okay. Check the d Okay, we'll check the door and then end the episode off. I will rest until I've expected every suspicious nook and cranny. The door, room 2 You know, it says 202. Or rather, it, I, yeah, it's supposed to be room 202. Portsman swapped at the nameplate. Room 1203. I suppose, I take it that this is Mr. Portsman's office. Yeah, you can't mistake it because the basketball hoop, sir. Oh, that reminds me. Mr. Portsman actually wanted room 1202 really badly. But since you were already occupying it, Mr. Edgeworth, we put him next door, sir. So why was the woman so particular about getting room 1202? I'm not sure, but I bet because of something like his birthday is December 2nd. Yup, it's got me! I can't think of another reason why! I can think of at least three. Bow! What am I even wasting time thinking about this for? The door's locked tight. <laughs> I bet the good old credit card trick wouldn't work here, huh, Miss Edgeworth? This is the office of a high prosecutor detective. These doors would be pretty ineffective if the average cat burglar could get through them. Ah, uh -huh, it's only a great cat burglar again! That must be who our culprit is! My I advise you to return that conclusion to whatever pawn shop you bought from. I gums you can afford to buy things. It's just a Portsman's personal basketball hoop. I can't believe he put something like this in the hallway of a prosecutor's office. But you know it's actually pretty useful, sir. I've gotten lost trying to find it to your office since it's been here. How long have I had the same office and yet you still managed to get lost? A minimalist yet classy door made of pup quality wood. It's kind of majestic too! Fits in really well with the ambience of the prosecutor's offices. Even the Portman seems to dignified just because he worked behind one of these. Not that the man does not does it become more or less dignified because of where he works. Well, well, he still seems more dignified than Mr. Payne! Mr. Payne? I suppose custodial work can also be dignified. <laughs> yes, Andrew thinks that Winston Payne is the janitor! And then it, Payne hears that. Why are you calling me a dater, Mr. Edgeworth? I am a prosecutor! Okay, anyways, we'll continue on with things in the next episode. Anyways, I really appreciate that you stuck around to watch this really awkward, really painful episode. I am, once again, I am really sorry about that whole brain fart where I couldn't get that freaking thing. Ugh, right in the first case, nonetheless. Anyways, I really appreciate that you stuck around to watch this episode. You're a great viewer. If you come back for the next one, if you like the video, like, subscribe, comment, share, do as you want. And with that, I'll see you later. Bye.